And I realized it was not total truth. There might be a little bit of truth in that. Amen. When the angry cut the tent and all the angry pass. No, no, that's not that. Hallelujah. Can you say that? Nothing is that true. There are four questions that I want to propose to you. The first question I want to look at what is anger? What is it? Number two, what are the various degrees of anger? And they are, which I'll show you tonight. Number three, what are some of the consequences of unsolved anger? And the last, and most important of all, how can we win over anger? That's where I believe the Lord wants to take us. How can we overcome? How can we be victorious over anger? Mr. Webster's dictionary tells me anger is an emotional reaction of hostility that brings personal displeasure either to ourselves or to others. Anger, Mr. Webster. Anger, it is not dealt with. Even the best of us as Christians, it will disarm us and rob us of our testimony. Many persons have lost their testimony. Say, my sister Margaret, because they were not able to overcome and to conquer anger. Can the church say amen? Amen. Anger will also destroy our relationship. Are you there? With God and with persons in our life, even that we have had good relationship with anger is not dealt with. But this anger, this word anger, we have to understand what it is. We need to get into it. I want to know what is this all about? I've always said, and you have been said it many times, knowledge liberates us, but ignorance will keep us in bondage. Can the church say amen? So, anger is something that must be understood. Anger, we must be willing to admit it when it comes. Are you there? We must be willing to keep it under control or it will literally destroy us. Um, I want to talk to you before I get deeper into that. Five different stages of anger. This is a bit of education tonight. Five different stages that we go through uh, with anger. If you're writing right, you're taking notes, please do so. And this lesson is for you also to pass on to others. Very profound, very intriguing, very helpful tonight. Anger. First stage of anger is called mild irritation. Has anyone in this house ever been irritated? It's called mild irritation. Deeper than loaded in a destruction of man. Mild irritation. How it starts. What is it? This is nothing more than perhaps an innocent experience of being upset. A mild feeling of discomfort brought about by someone or something. You know, maybe somebody might have just made a little remarks, hmm? passed a very innocent remark to others. Could be about our hair, could be about how we dress. You know, how many times, how many know? I've said it Sunday morning, and uh, you know, past have learned and have grown. I mean, we're mature. And, you know, I know who I make jokes with. Are you there? Oftentimes, we innocently make a joke with somebody, and they take it the wrong way. And that's why I, I, I made reference to Evangelist Gary on Sunday in my message. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And I was, I was throwing a few punches at him. And it was so, so funny. And you know, it had to do with the music. 
And, and he, he took it as my friend. Because he knows my heart. But it was amazing after church, I found out he was only part of it. It was another man. <laughs> and yet he, he took it gracefully. I want to tell you. Even though some folks, they would walk on a church and go marry pastor. Because pastor is a bondage of her. But what a man. That's why I said, I know the man, the friend, and I hate church. He thought it was a joke because he knew we're calling, you know, things need to be coordinated. But we need to know. Oftentimes, there's a mild irritation. No till deliberate. Amen. Back home, you'll call certain persons that have thin skin. And you will make jokes with people around you and they will take it out of context. And then you didn't mean it. You just make a little joke. You know, there's a time my brother, you know, I, I don't touch a lady's wigs anymore around here. No, sir. No. I, I learned, praise God. You know, I, I, like, I like it natural. But, you know, and I realized, you know, some of my friends corrected me. I said, you just keep in your weeks. So I learned, praise God. I learned. Yes, my wife doesn't wear a lot of the weeks, but she had a little bit of the conversation once in a while. And one day I was preaching and I was up to wig and I looked around at my wife. Yeah. And I said something. And I tell you, I learned from that. <laughs> Leave the ladies' wigs alone. After church, Mr. Margaret, I got to the car, and the car was bored. My wife was sitting beside me, and I looked at her, and all of a sudden, I was sitting in an icebox. Nobody had said anything. And my sister Malcolm, I kept driving home, because I felt, I'm hearing from in my spirit, you have never opened your mouth to me. <laughs> so you know when to be alarmed. And man, praise God, I got home, and you know, you know, I give a little time and it came around and everything was fine. But we learned, don't we? It all starts with a mild irritation. That's how anger starts. Sometimes unintentional. Are you there? And if it's not corrected at that particular time, some persons, they will tell you if they are a bit upset, but some persons won't. What they do, they keep it in their heart and they nurture it. So now we go from that, it germinates, it stays there, it goes to another level. Will you work with me? Remember, the first stage of anger is a mild irritation. Second stage is not dealt with, it's called indignation. It's a mild irritation, indignation. What is it? Here it is. This is when anger, which is current of irritation, indignation. This is a feelings of, what's this now? A feelings uh, and personally thinking about avenging how they can get back at you because you step and my foot. And when sometimes you walk away, move on, and leave everything is fine. You don't know that persons are still nurturing that feeling in their heart against you. Are you there? So, both irritation and indignation, both of them can go unexpressed because it's in the heart. Come on. And you sometimes meet folks, they they get to that stage and they greet them and everything is good. Some folks are evangelists where they have a way of just covering up wearing masks. Or when you evangelize, oh bless God for that. Everything is fine. But deep down, it's like a bonding heart. That's the second stage of anger. Are you there? All we saw. Will you walk with me going to now? To the third. That's how anger develops. The third step into anger is called wrath. Wrath. If not dealt with indignation, will lead now to wrath. Now, wrath also, 
existence. Never go on express wrong. Never go. Once you get to that state now, it has to come out now. You can't hide it anymore. Psychologists tell us that wrong is a strong desire to avenge revenge. From malnutrition hmm, to inclination is like a volcano now. I nurture this thing for long enough. I need to get back at you. It has to come forth. Are you there? And it comes forth in so many areas. This is where now you will see the expression in person's face. Come on. The person that is most smile with you, oh, well, you praise God. He know they smile with you. Now, because it cannot hide anymore, they don't want to look at you anymore. Or when you're talking to them, they're looking in the wall. You're talking to them, they're sweating. And if you're really in the spirit, you know something is going on. Because the mannerism, the attitude, is now changed. Well, if you have never experienced what I'm talking about, God bless you. If you're living on this side of heaven, which I am, every one of us that are sitting here, at some time in our life, will have walked through this great adversaries. I tell you, wrath, it has to express. But that is still only three stages. How many stages I told you? Five. So we still have three. So now, they don't want us to see you anymore. They don't want to talk to you anymore. The attitude now is changing. And you're walking away and wondering what am I doing? Innocently. You're, you're questioning what? Why is my friend behaving like what? Why is this person? Why is this man of the church? You used to sit beside me in church every Sunday. I don't know she could play with the garbage. What's going on? Innocent. And these things do happen, my friends, are a part of life. We are great people. And so the third is wrong. Are you ready now for number four? It's boiling up now. Number four is what we call fury. Fury. Wrong will lead to fury. Fury means violence. Can I repeat that? Fury means and at this stage in anger is when a person loses emotional control. You hear that? Person loses emotional control. Very good. Many persons today who go to the prisons to various parts of the world. A lot of these prisoners that are there were to sit beside them and they were to be honest with you. How did they get there? You'd be surprised to know. Not all. But a lot of them, or if something happened and it started with that mild irritation. Someone said something. Somebody did something. And it could have been resolved. But it can hurt you. Develops from one stage to the next to a point where now they are burst. They have to take revenge. Fury. I would love to say this is only in the, the secular world, the unsaved world, but I have to also tell you, my brother, if you're Christian, don't see. Even amongst Christians, even amongst Christians in the church. Can I hear it? I said, even amongst Christians in the church. My irritation. Come on. Innocent. And it was never dealt with. And it got to a point where fury. They can't control the emotion. But that's just number four. It's that one more to go. Then I go to number five before I get into the lesson. 
Number five is called rage. Rage. Rage is the most dangerous form of anger. Rage. Hmm? What is rage? Rage is a temporary loss of control. Yeah. Involving acts of violence. That they can't control the anger in them. They lash it out. Many have committed suicide, not suicide, many people have committed murder because they allow the, the anger to get in a space. They have no control. Or even your brothers and sisters. The five, I'm going to repeat them again, five stages of anger. I'm going to repeat them. Number one, it was mild irritation. Number two, indignation. Number three, wrath. Number four, fury. And number five, rage. Five steps of anger. Are you there? So let's go back to scripture then. Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesian church. As I read earlier, I'm going to repeat it again. Verse 26 and 27. The topic I said earlier on, the two faces or the two sides of anger. Hmm? Be anger and sin not, he said. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That's the King James Version. The Amplified Bible Version. Here he said, be angry, do not sin, do not even let your wrath, your uh, uh, exacerbation, your fury, your ignition, last until the sun goes down. Leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. New English Bible says, if you're angry, do not let anger lead you into sin. Do not let the sun set find you still nursing. Leave no loophole for the devil. Wow. So let me get further now with the lesson. Three important things for us to observe in these two verses of scripture. Let's get further to it. The first one, as he said, be angry and say not. First one, we need to recognize. And this now is going against a lot of mindsets, but I believe in scripture, the principle of the word. Angry, or anger rather, is a God given emotion. That's a shocking one. Anger is a God given emotion. Two sides, two faces. Are you there? If you have never been angry in your life, I want to say something is wrong, my brothers and sisters. If you are walking upon planet Earth and you're mixing with people, if you have never been angry, if you have been honest, I think you and I are on the wrong track. Are you there? God is saying by the Spirit of the Lord, even when the apostle wrote the scripture, he said, God is saying, you will get angry into your body. The scripture is saying to you and I, my brothers and sisters, we will get angry. You don't need to say that. Amen. I just shot some folks. Well, my Christians, I never know every one of us both are godly and the Christians. I don't care how many years we are serving the Lord. I know spiritual we are. We, we, all of us, brothers and sisters, will get angry at some time. Amen. Amen. Second, angry, anger rather, is not necessarily sinful. Ooh. 
Let me find the reception. Anger is a God giving emotion. And as long as we're living as planet Earth, every one of us, at some point in our life, will become it. Number two, however, anger is not necessarily sinful. I'm going to give you a scripture. Bear with me now. Don't stall me now. God is saying in verse 26, and the Holy Ghost said in verse 26, be angry and sin. You get that? So anger is not necessarily sinful. The Bible is telling us, amen, we can get angry but don't sin. So there's a choice, the power of the decision that the Holy Ghost says. We have a choice, brothers and sisters. We will get anger. Not any expression of anger is wrong. That's why I call this lesson tonight. The two sides of anger, or the two faces of anger. Are you there? So God is saying, be ye angry, but don't carry that anger to the point where it becomes sin. Are you there, church? In the Old Testament, the Bible scholars, you can check that. There are 18 times in the Old Testament, the Bible speaks of this word. Not just that, speak about the anger of the Lord. God Himself gets angry. Are you there? And in the New Testament, the there is there. We see where Jesus Himself demonstrates His anger. Wow. Let's go further. I think I'm getting excited. You remember when Jesus went to church one Sabbath? I remember the story. Jesus, the Son of God, who know no sin, went to church. And when you walk in the church, you expect to hear in the hymns of Zion, people of God praying and singing and worshiping God when you went to the church. The church was turned into a marketplace. Hey. They began to merchandise in the house of God. Jesus, the Bible says, was very glad what was happening in the house of God. Currently, no. I just show somebody about that you should give me the current part. Don't accept everything I said. No, the Bible said Jesus was angry. He was mad. Talk to me, somebody. He demonstrated his anger. Oh, there is some Margaret. When he saw the disrespect, I know what was going on in the house of God. The, the house of prayer turned into a den of thieves. He got a whip. Come on. He was not a gentle Jesus speaking man. He was a lion of the tribe of Judah. He began to rule and eat him out of the temple. Come on, church. There's two faces to anger. Are you there? Come on now. There are times, my brothers and sisters, when anger is very appropriate. Wow. I said there are times when anger is appropriate. Are you there? Third, anger must have safeguards. No misses. Two safeguards for Oka to go to Moses. Jesus bore it when Jesus went there. Two safeguards. So, yes, we get angry. Are you there, church? Yes, there are times you and I will get angry. But Paul is showing us here of the two safeguards that presents itself. Find ourselves in that position of time. Number one, verse 26. He said, Do not let the sun go down on your anger. 
Say, God, number one, yes, we we'll get angry, but don't let the sun go down. Don't go to bed with that anger in your heart. Don't prolong your anger into the night. Come on. Are you there? Why? Jesus told a story about the end time. That's why I've always said, when you go to bed, you should not go to bed with Jesus. The spirit of God. And many people go to bed and they never wake up. It's in the past. You know, I have a song two nights ago. And, and I, here's the piece, because that's just my lifestyle. I like to encourage people. I have a problem when I hear Christians talk about they in their bed, they're sleeping and demons chasing them. Something is wrong. When my Bible tells me, he giveth his beloved sleep. And even though your body is resting, it's the spirit of God inside of you should worship God 24 7. So when you hear a person tell you, oh, I had a bad dream last night, and you know, and the alligator was running with them, and and lays everybody, and all the mess. You have to sit back and ask, okay, how do you go to bed? Most of my dreams, when, of course, God speaks to me in various ways for ministry. Different things. But most of my dreams, I'm telling you, it happens to me all the time. I'm always in church. I'm always in crusades in my sleep. Two nights ago, amen, I was sleeping and that, that situation, you know, the Spirit of God is in you. All of us, I'm sure, here should have these experiences. The missionary, uh, Jackson, you could be working at the workplace on your computer. Don't you hear sometimes the Spirit of God saying that those songs it's like you're worshiping God. You're still conscious of what you're doing, but you can hear the new spirits worshiping God. Come on. And it's amazing. It's by me. And in my, in my sleep, in my I'm dreaming, I'm singing this song. And this song consumed me. How many of you have those experiences? It's like, it's like I, I was alone, but I was just worshiping God. And I heard it and I keep singing it. And I tell you, my brothers and sisters, all right, you know, I go back and forth and hear it. And it was so profound. It was so profound. And I woke up. And I woke up singing the song. I couldn't shut it down. I just, just was there worshiping God. And I kept saying, where did this song came from? I don't recall this song. And I'm just saying, it was sick. I was consumed with this worship song in the praise of the Lord. And when I woke, when I came up after the worship in the morning, I think we need a new song because it's still in my spirit. And I went on my phone and I plugged in the name of the song. And I was amazed that this song was sung many, many years ago. Amen. Uh, now that I have had it here, let me show you this. Precious, precious memories. I'm sure you all heard it. By, by Grace Frillers. But many, many years. That's what I was singing. But can I play, can I give you a little bit of this? It, it's still blessing my heart. You guys hear it? Precious memories. Huh? It's beautiful, isn't it? It blesses my heart so much. And even since two nights ago, even today, again, it's still in my spirit. Precious Jesus. Sweet rose of Sharon. I've never heard this. I think it's the way they said it in that song. And I never. No way this song came from. What a song. When you get out, you can plug it to check it out. And then we got that excited about this song. And I said, Lord, but it, it, I just consumed. And I said, Lord, I need to say that song. So I sent it to Minister Sanchez yesterday, today, and I said, You have to copy this song. I want you and I to say that song. 
Because how many know when, when somebody gets a hold of you, they come apart to you? Precious Jesus. Sweet rose of Sharon. That's the, that's the atmosphere, brother, the Spirit of God wants us to, to be in, even when we are sleeping. Praise God. Praise and worship in our God. Are you with me, church? So, let's go back there. So, the Apostle Paul is saying, do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. Jesus talks about uh, the entire time. He said, two shall be there. He said, Luke chapter 17 and verse 34, two men shall be one day. One is taken and one is left. Brothers and sisters, I don't want to be left behind. When my roll call comes, I want me to go home to the Lord. When persons have issues with each other and we are angry with each other, do not go to bed with that anger in our hearts. And so the Apostle Paul is cautioning the Ephesian church. Yes, you can be angry, but don't let the sun go down. Get rid of it. Don't go to bed like that. Praise God. Can you say, man, that's one of the safeguards. The longer you nurse the anger or hurt, the worse it will get and harder for us to get it out. Think about that. The second safeguard, verse 27, do not give any place to the devil. Did you see that? Do not allow anger to be expressed in such a way that you are weakened and the devil reproduces his characteristics truths. And it is a fact, brothers and sisters. I'm talking about Christians. Let's be careful. Praise God. Many Christians, if you're not careful, will lose our testimonies. Because, I mean, you know, if we nurture these things and we let this thing develop, we're losing the victims becoming weaker and weaker. And the devil is becoming stronger and stronger. And after the time person gets to a point where it's so hard to forgive, their heart becomes hard. Are you there? When we're under the control of the Holy Spirit, the characteristics of the Lord will go flow freely through our lives. Can the church say amen? They talk about the gift, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Those are the fruits that should be developed in our hearts, brothers and sisters. And every one of us here, at some point in our life, persons have hurt us, persons have done us wrong, but we have a choice. We can nurture it, we go to bed with it, let it develop, then become harder and harder. We are losing our testimony. Another thing I've learned also, also coming down in time. How many know first that hurt you? When you are hurting, when you nurture it, they don't want to do it. Or oh, I just spoke past my son. You know, they just put in a life like nothing. And you're dying. And I've already said, my brothers and sisters, listen, nobody has the right. Don't give anybody the right to be controlling you. No. He who angry to control you. Great peace of day and love that. Oh, nothing. Release them, my brothers and sisters. I preached a message some time ago, and a message is still in my spirit. It's just awesome when I think about it. Amen. How many remember a piece of it last year, some time ago? You see? Hmm? I forgive you for my sin. What a message. I forgive you for my sin. Not for your sin. Come on, brothers and sisters. We are still on the subject of anger. He said, don't let the devil, don't give the devil an, an occasion. Don't let it go down. Don't go to bed with it. But watch the devil now. Do not give any place to the devil. But the devil loves that, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. You know that when anger gets to the point where it is beyond your control, mm -hmm. The Lord is not in it. Talking to somebody. And you are no under the influence of the devil. Then you get out of hand. Are you there? So let's look now. I have a few more minutes. When is anger justified? Can I talk to you? 
Three specific situations in scripture where anger is justified or justifiable. Number one, I'm going to go reading quickly to Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. Two faces of anger. Exodus chapter 32. Here we are. Praise God. I read from verse 1 to verse 10 quickly. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down of the mountain, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up! Make us gods uh, which shall go before us. For as for the, this Moses, you see the disrespect? The man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. I got this Moses. No longer lead him out. And Aaron said unto them, Break out the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, hallelujah, which were in the ears and brought them unto me. And they received them at the hands and fashioned them, fashioned it with a graven tool after he had made it molded calf. And they said, There be thy gods, O Islam, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Don't miss this. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early in the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought uh, peace offerings. Hallelujah. And the people sat down and eat and drink and rose up to play. Did you see that, church? And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down. For thy people which thou hast brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Ah, uh, they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a holy calf and have worshipped it and have sanctified their own soul and said, uh, these be the gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. Look at verse 10. And now, therefore, let me be alone, let me alone, that I may my rod, hallelujah, my rod may wax hot against them. And that I may consume them, uh, and I will make of thee a great nation. When is anger justified? Here is one of them. When God's word and God's will are knowingly disobeyed by God. When God's word and the will of God is knowingly, not ignorantly, knowingly disobeyed by God's people in that particular case. Anger is justified. Hmm? As Christians, I ask you the question, and you might be on the subway, might be in the mall, how do you feel? You're in a situation and you have to be here. Cursing the name of God. Using the name of God as a pastor and a baggage to kill you in Jesus. I don't know how you feel. There's something that rises up in my spirit. When you first know they disrespect the name of my God. Talk to me. God was mad. When the word of God and the will of God, hallelujah, has been disrespected and ignored, abused, used. No will be my people. God's name, the name of God is come as a godly and a scary name. Have you ever heard recently? Hmm? How 
what they feel, my brother. Righteous indignation is the right thing. When the people consider them as my God. Second, what is it? Is when God's enemies assume position of jurisdiction outside the right. Isaiah wrote it. Isaiah 5, chapter 5, Isaiah chapter 5. Here we are. Isaiah chapter 5, from verse 20 to 25. Here it says, verse 20, Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Warn to them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own heart's sight. Warn to them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Which justify the wicked for reward and take away righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flames consume the shock, so their root shall be, although as rottenness, and their blossom shall be, shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised, hallelujah, the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, Verse 25. In the anger of the Lord, in the anger of the Lord kindled against the people, and he hath stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten them, and the hills tremble, and the carcasses were born in the midst of the street. For all this is anger not turning. Second reason why the disanger is justified is when the enemies of God they then assume a position make decision turn evil good and call good evil assume position of your addiction Outside of righteousness. In verse 23 it says, Those who take away the right from those, from those who are in the right. That's who we're really living in today. That's who we're really living in, my brothers and sisters, all around us. There are people today, and we don't have to look far, look at what's going on in Europe, Russia, Ukraine, how many innocent people. I watch the news, CNN. I like to watch the news. You know what's going on in the world. What's in heaven and what's going on in earth. And we have seen last night that an old lady was watching a big glass car. You know, and one of the bombs dropped in her house. A of her family was killed. A little old Cuban lady. And she was already rubbing. And I said, oh God. My heart cries out. Innocent people are being slaughtered. My brothers and sisters. And men are trying to justify their acts. That's the world that we live in today. That's the world that we live in. And, and, and so, the wrath of God, anger of God, and we as the church, we as God's people, we have to take a position Cry out against evil acts. I told you, I've never stood in this pulpit and discussed politics. In the last election, the Lord spoke to me and I stood right here. That this is election time. A lot of these politicians, remember in the past, will come 
So let me make sure that I'm not surprised. Can I come and greet the congregation? I stop them from doing that. Let you only see them when the election time comes. And traditionally, for those of us who migrate here in the 60s and 70s, 80s, we know quite well about the Trudeau era. Very Trudeau and all of that comes speak to us as immigrants. And the last time the Lord said, speak to me, Trudeau era, they went over. And many people are still connected to that. And I still write it. There's not voted in the past. But thank God for now. When I saw what the liberals have done, how they legalized marijuana, hmm? legalized uh, uh, all type of mess, stealing sex, and all of them. And, and the Lord said, You have to declare it, you have to stand up against it. And so we have to understand what I, I said to the brother, it's not who we like anymore. As men of God, we have to alert our people. We have to listen to their platform. And we have to ask God for wisdom that we call black person. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin reproach. And I stood right here. And I called my people and asked them and said, God said, and I sought the Lord, and I declared for the first time. Look at what they're involved in. How can we condone that? Ask God's people that we stand for righteousness. And no direction came around here. Amen. I have not even this yet. If the Lord said, go back here, I'm going to go back here. We are God's people, brothers and sisters. So we're living in a day. And this is a fact that men are calling evil good. But we are the light of the church. We are the salt. Are we going to be swept away because we light our home? No. But we have to stand up for righteousness. And that is what is needed today. That is what is needed. Are you there, church? That is what is needed. We cannot be fooled anymore. We cannot be fooled. We stand up for what God stands up for. Are you there? Number three, when anger is justified is when children are dealt with in unfairly to the parents. When parents are abusing their children. Are you there, church? Are you there? Ephesians chapter 6. You'll be surprised. Thank God for God's appearance. Months ago, you know, we used to say Canada is the is the pride of the world. Canada, we bless God for Canada. We you know, but if they live longer, they will look in my country. But they say in Canada that we're big enough. The Canada is the pride of the city crop. All of a sudden, now we're hearing now we have a lot of children that are slaughtered. Huh? They are finding mass graves of innocent children. And the sad thing about it, they were being slaughtered by, it came out of a religion, the Roman Catholic movement. How can we justify that? Let me call ourselves Christian, but not Christian, we call it religious. Who should be protecting the innocent? They're now finding mass graves of the innocent. The Bible says, Read it. Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the law. For this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the right in the sight of God. And there's a promise. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Look at verse 4. Father, provoke both not your children to wrath. Did you see that? But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, servants, the leaders, the left, which are masked over you. 
دیلم چطور؟ بدون سفار از این باز ورس سکس سفر ورس فور بله اون من تو گفت یک چیزی از پیرنس بیاد تو لاغ آن چیز از پیرنس بیاد تو تیک کیر بود تو بیاد 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 از پیرنس I remember a couple years ago, a man, a, a young little boy from Jamaica. It was a big thing in the newspaper. You remember? His father brought him up, brought him up in Jamaica with the mother-in-law. And somewhere along the line, he had news about the little boy. Right there in South Asia. The dead mother. They took this little boy head and mashed up to the wall in the house. Right on the door in jail. I was a minister that was asked to conduct that service. I, I cried right through. Tears. Could I believe that somebody could be so vicious? A little innocent boy. Mutilated boy head. Brothers and sisters, the wrath of God would rise up again. Let's be very careful how we treat our children. They are vulnerable. Let's protect them. Are you there, church? As parents, we must be very sensitive to our children's feelings. Hmm? We must not push our children to run. Are you there? Oh, please. And justified anger. I'm coming by the way. When anger, come on, unjustified anger is when anger comes from the wrong motive. Unjustified anger. The prodigal son says, Luke chapter 15, you read it when you get home, verse 17 to 27. You know what he did? He fell and did a big blunder. But then when he returned, he's got justified anger now. His elder brother, evangelist, was mad. He should have rejoiced But he was mad when he saw how his father was raised. There are persons like that today. Unjustified anger. Are you there, church? When hunger comes from the wrong motive, you have to watch that. Are you there? Daniel chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. Read it when you get home. King Nebuchadnezzar, because of pride, he was angry with the three Hebrew boys. Because they refused to bow and to worship. Rage made him. You know what happened? The three boys were thrown into the fire. But God. And so we have to be very careful, my brothers and sisters. That this anger, it was allowed to check it out, make sure. To when things don't go our way, there's some people you know when they don't have their own way, they get very angry. Are you there? Jonah, you know this story about Jonah, chapter four, verse two to nine. You know what happened when he went back and he spoke the word because of his experience. He they left the, the fish and he got back and preached preach the message. The entire city repented. And the Bible said, read it because you get home. Jonah chapter 4 and verse 2 to 9. He went and he sat under uh, uh, one of those trees. Not trees, but vine. He was mad because he expected God to destroy them. Come on. Things did not go his way, and because of that, he got mad at God had to teach him a lesson under the God of the Sunday. Many people are anger. Come on. When 
goes off into a fit of rage when they don't have things their way. Can you say amen? Number three, when you react too quickly without investigating the facts, many people get angry. Don't take time to investigate the facts. Have you ever had any experience like that? Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 8 to 9 says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Are you there? And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Be not hasty in thy spirit to anger, for anger blesseth the bosom of fools. Some person has blow up the top, go into a rage, and they don't take time to investigate the matter. Proverbs 16 and verse 32 says, He that is slow to anger is better. That the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit, than he that taketh the city. Praise God. We have to learn, my brothers and sisters. Oftentimes, if we take time to investigate the matter, and I've said it many times, oftentimes there's a minor issue that comes to us. But in a long term way, to a point. Always end up, by the way, brings it for you and shows you. When a person gets to that place of fury and it's out there, not only hurting that person, hurting the person, innocent person, but it affects everyone else around you. It's a fact. How do we win now over anger when we love? When we read them quickly, how do you, how do you overcome this? Talk about the negative side of it. How do you overcome that? The one, learn to ignore petty disagreements. Petty disagreements. If you have a problem, ask the Holy Spirit. Because thin skin, thin skin, skin through thin. Amen. Many people are thin skin. Petty. The little thing, the slightest thing they can blow up, they get upset. Hmm? The Bible says in Proverbs 19:11, the discretion of a man deferred in anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. Are you there? Sometimes there's something like you go there. It's worth it. Proverbs 17 and verse 14 says, the beginning of a strife is as when one let it out water, therefore leave off contention before it be meddled with. Before it become out of control, leave it alone. Proverbs 1 9, Psalms 119, 165 verse, Great peace of they that love the Lord, nothing. Brothers and sisters, if you and I were to be upset and angry over anything, wow, we we'll get over that angry when the time comes. You know, many people are, are sick, mental illnesses, and all that, and these things that go along. But it's true because of the heart. We have people that are angry believers. Hard heart. But thank God, the Lord is helping us. The minor Disagreement is just a small break up. Because none of us are perfect, you know. How many know that? Number two, refrain from close association with angry persons. Don't hang around them. Ooh, that's what the Bible says. I'm giving you a scripture. Proverbs 22, verse 24 to 25 says, Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his way and get a sneer to thy soul. That's what the Bible says. People that are always angry, emotional outbursts, always maintaining bitterness and unforgiving spirit, 
The Bible is telling us such Christians carry it on them. That man is telling us, just don't hang out with them because it is called transfer of spirit. And this is a fact. My mom always said, show me a friend and tell me who you are. My brothers and sisters, there are some people that you know, you should, you should not be associated with them. And I've made that decision a long time ago in my life, not just as a pastor. I love the nice people. I love godly people. I love people when, I, when I'm told that my, they, they uplift my spirit. There are people that come into your life and and they talk to you when they just leave them and they are so depressed. It's all the garbage. Oh, brothers and sisters, you want to go and praise with God, you have to disassociate yourself from these other people. Can you say that? Yeah. Well, I'm finished. Number three, keep very close check on our tongue. Our tongue. Proverbs 21 and verse 20 says, Whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from trouble. Any person, I'm coming down, that's all we're talking. Watch that person. And I, I, it's not in my notes, but I'm going to say, any man that is me, all we're talking. You have so many words that make women, you know. We don't have, have stand down with all those around me to come out. But we have some men, if you ever listen to any talk, run from them. Hmm? Back home, we always say, we learn that women are always talking to us, but they don't really like that too. Watch people that are always talking, all get into people's business. Come on, just, just stay away from them. Connect yourself. They said, Who are my companions? Those that fear God. Seekers of righteousness. People that love God. Brothers and sisters, those are people that edify you, that builds you up. Come on. Come on. I told you last week that one of the time I was preaching, I said, uh, there are not gossipers around the world. They have been here from day one, they are still here today in the world. But anytime a person comes to you to gossip, they come to you because they don't respect you. Can I repeat that? The Bible is here. You agree with me, sir? A gossiper come to you to gossip because they don't respect you. And why they come to you? They see you just as a gossiper. The moment you block them, the moment you shut them down, they do not come to you. So don't think when people come to you they gossip and they garbage, they love you. No, they don't respect you. That's why they bring the garbage to you. Come on, this is why he's saying, brothers and sisters, he doesn't have an ear, they don't hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Life is too short. We are too much, we are too busy for God. Not to let people dump their garbage in our ears. Tell them take it somewhere else. Amen. Proverbs 15 and verse 1 says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but a grievous word stop anger. Talk to me. And the last one. Cultivate honesty in your communication with one another. Don't let anger win. Communicate. Get to a conversation, my brothers and sisters. Be honest with each other. We just finished the series of love. That's what it's all about. There's an old saying, you know, I'm closing. The best of us is a little bad. And the worst of us is a little good. Are you being it? I know you believe it. The best of us is a little bad. And the worst of us is a little good. That's why we are working progress. And so every day we submit to ourselves to the Lord. Never make your place where we come we are, we are right. We are working progress. Come on. Speak well of each other, please. Come on. Cultivate honesty in our communication with one another. Don't let anger be enough. It says here, Proverbs 27, verse 5 and 6, After the new is better than secret love. Painful are the wounds of a friend, but the kiss of an enemy is deceitful. Or the kiss of an enemy is deceitful. Amen. 
friends that mean well to each other. Love each other. Benefit your wounded by telling them the truth. And to kiss me and never end me. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Ephesians 4 50 says, Speak the truth in love. And the church says, Amen. Ephesians 4 25, Speak the truth to your neighbor. Amen. There's no substitute, my brothers and sisters. None at all. For real honest. Let us love each other. I trust tonight a very short word on this foundation. As we went through the two faces of Christ. Don't let this be the Bible. If I do this, it's going to happen in your workplace. It's going to happen in the church. It's going to happen in the mall. You always need someone that has a little issue. But we can make a determination in our hearts. Brother, we're going to deal with this thing and move on. We're not going to go to bed. I'll not be angry with anybody. So just in case the Lord calls us. And by the way, this is a heavy thing to us. If you have a lot of things in your heart and the guy just sleeps, you're not going to heaven. Let us know. That's a heavy one. Let us know. We can't forgive. We don't love each other. Amen. How can we say we love God? Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, let us just enjoy our salvation. Let us live. Live. Praise God and please God. Amen. And this, and you know what I found also in Bangladesh? You see, you know, every time I preach, there's always a text that comes. <laughs> so tomorrow, this week, I'm looking for a few texts. Because you know, it's like that. Amen. Praise God. Just like I told you something when I went to this restaurant this weekend, I just spoke this on there about this love matter. Forgive. Amen. And the guy was rude. Amen. I mean, not sure I would have dealt with it. But you know what? I hate to sit up and say, you know what it is? Love thinketh no evil. Come on. So this week, if you are tested now, tomorrow, remember the message tonight. Remember, remember the message. Amen. Don't let the devil trick you. Praise God. Forgive, love, move on. Amen. Don't take it personal. I've always said in closing, and here's a good one for you. I always say, the devil in them ain't the God in you. And that settles it, brothers and sisters. So I'm very blessed tonight. Very, very simple when I say conversation. Just come and hold on to your salvation. Don't let nobody out. Enjoy your salvation. Serve God, praise God. This associated with little people. Amen. Uh, you know, certain type of spirit, no mix up this thing. Faith, fly with Jesus, not the chicken, in Jesus' name. Amen. You just testify, witness the chicken, but don't hang up with them. Want to chant your spirit. Amen. Be an example that the Christ that is within us manifests. Amen. I saw that. I saw the way that the, the tithe of it. Our fish and the tithe and offering of the back. Praise God. Very blessed tonight. Don't forget now. Uh, this Sunday. Yes. The Saturday morning. Amen. We're going to deliver flyers in the 11 o'clock evangelist. Praise God. Uh, we have a number of young people, but just in case one of the older ones feel that you want to come to the church in this society, these are good. We go to their apartments. And we have done it many times. It's just wonderful. Amen. So evangelists will be leading the team. And then this Saturday, I have a funeral here, so I want to Monday night, I'll be here to lead the team, Monday night and Tuesday night. The worship team, the um, prayer meeting is to go on, intercessor, but I'm still meeting with young people of my office, going to deliver flyers in the apartment buildings and so forth. Praise God, prepare, and then we're looking forward to next week, Sunday, when the cruise is starts. Amen. God richly bless you. God bless you. I pray for all of you tonight. Jesus' name. Be encouraged. Let us all raise our hands. Praise God. Amen. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord cause you.